Hey guys, it's Haley Pomeroy here, uh, your nutritionist, and we are going to do something very exciting today. I always say I love to science geek out with you all, but today we're going to actually do a science experiment. We're going to be testing your digestive reserves, and I am super fortunate today to have Stephanie with me. You are one of our beloved community members. Stephanie, thank you for volunteering your your time and letting me science do a little science experiment with you and um, it, would you mind sharing with the community just maybe your journey with us um, this is the first time we've ever gotten to meet and uh, kind of where you're at sure I um I actually started the fast metabolism diet uh, a couple years ago between my second and third child mm -hmm. and I had a lot of success with it um, I didn't when I got pregnant with my third child though I kind of went off it a little bit and um, I haven't really done it since then and now I just gave birth in April to my last child <laughs> um, I don't know be careful but, of the cleanse we have a lot of cleanse babies <laughs> So this is my fourth and my husband and I are, are really done with kids and I'd like to get back to my um, pre-birth from all my babies. Uh, nice. my pre -birth date. And then I also had some um, hormonal issues with the last pregnancy and, and I really feel I just need to get my body straightened out uh, in addition to losing the weight. So then I went back on it uh, after I gave birth. That's awesome, Stephanie. And I didn't I didn't know any of that about you. Congratulations. I wish we had baby pictures. We'll have to post those under here, please. Um, <laughs> we kind of drop everything for kids. We, we are, we're a little crazy over here about that kind of stuff. Uh, I think it's my growing up, my mom was a fertility specialist. So we had lots of babies. Um, so this is actually a great um, time to test digestive reserves. So a couple things that happen in pregnancy, um, one of the reasons why we um, see morning sickness or heartburn maybe later in pregnancy is because our bodies alter some of the pancreatic enzymes that we secrete early on in pregnancy so we don't proteolize or break down the pregnancy itself also late in pregnancy in order to kind of hypo uh, hyper vasodilate for blood flow and increase amniotic fluid and stuff our bodies will start to alter the ph as well as the digestion digestive enzymes during pregnancy is one of the reasons why we see the highest level of gallbladder resection or cholecystitis gallbladder inflammation during pregnancy post delivery and menopause is because the gallbladder is kind of the recycling power plant for the sex hormones. A lot of us don't know that, but it's also where we use, house a lot of our digestive enzymes. So this, I'm excited to actually see what we find with your, you're like, like the perfect person for us to play with right here because it's gonna <laughs> probably be interesting, you guys. Um, yeah. But this, what we do is with, we call it the lemon challenge test or the digestive reserves. You guys can all download this in your membership section. Um, it's if you did the uh, 10 day cleanse kit for this challenge, it, we put together a notebook and that's actually in there. But what we're trying to do is our bodies produce enzymes throughout um, throughout our body. We think of enzymes maybe just in our mouth, but we produce enzymes, the liver enzymes, the kidneys have enzymes, the bone has enzymes. And enzymes um, help activate hormones, help carry hormones throughout the body. They definitely help break down food as well as sometimes they can break down the enamel in your teeth and people get cavities or you can get canker sores or things like that are enzyme related. What we want to test with this is how how strong is your reserve in your salivary enzymes? It's the easiest place for us to test uh, at home with our fish in, our, in, the, in the background. We can do all this from home, right? So we're gonna test our saliva pH and pH can give an indication of how many enzymes are being housed in that saliva sample. And then we wanna challenge it. So we wanna challenge it by doing something that's very, very acidic and see if the body rebounds and stabilizes on its own and if so how long it takes to stabilize and then we play a lot with what does that mean if it took longer what does that mean if it doesn't so on and so forth so in order to do this i want you guys to all and and stephanie get your sheets out 
Stephanie, I'm going to be your timer today. Okay. A couple little things. <laughs> a couple little things um, to note is that you're using pH or nitrazine strips. You do not put these in your mouth. You can use a plastic spoon. I don't suggest using a silver spoon. Sometimes they're they're plated or they're silver that can um, um, change the pH of your testing. So a plastic spoon. And again, with the strips, you should have your strips. Stephanie, you, do you have yours? Um, yep, I am all set. Okay. And you should have your 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 um, testing paper in there. And this Sorry. is what your strips look like. Yep. Some of my clients take the strips and they cut them this way so that they have more strips. Um, but again, don't put it in your mouth. You're going to spit in the spoon and put it in there. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have Stephanie swallow 10 times and then she's going to get a pH reading of her saliva. So the reason, so Stephanie, go ahead and start swallowing 10 times. What you'll notice when you're doing this, guys, is that for about three or four, your mouth's going to feel really dry. And then what we're trying to do is entice those, that parotid gland and all of the salivary glands under the tongue to, I need a pen, to, um, oh, I've got a pen. Wow, that was amazing. To uh, start to produce some new saliva. So once you get to 10 times, Stephanie, I'm going to have you just spit in the spoon and we're just going to test your pH and then you can throw that pH strip away. Uh, and I'm just going to duck off to do this. Yes, I did the same thing. <laughs> Ideally, you're going to want to do this about two hours away from eating. So Stephanie ate uh, her breakfast. She's waiting for us to be done for her snack. And she's going to give us her pH. So this is just with the stress response of swallowing 10 times. And again, around three or four, you'll notice your mouth starts to get really dry. And then what typically happens is you'll start to produce saliva just from the swallowing will stimulate that. Did you get a nice pH number there, Stephanie? I'm just getting it now. Okay. Yeah, it's it's not as easy as you think to swallow ten times in a row. I know. Your <laughs> mouth gets really dry, right? Oh yes. Okay. And again, when you're when you're swallowing, right? So that's one of the reasons why I tell people, you know, when you eat, I want you to chew each bite. As long as it takes to sing happy birthday, you want to chew each bite because that helps you produce more enzymes. And remember, the enzymes are going to allow you to break down food and turn them into micronutrients so that you can actually heal the metabolism. Okay, so judging by this, I'm going to say it's a six. A 6.0. Okay. So ideally, our salivary pH and our urine pH is just slightly acidic. So we look for about a 6.8 is what we're ideally looking for. So already with Stephanie, Stephanie, we're saying, hmm, she's got a little bit of low production in, this, in the salivary enzymes. We don't have as much, right, going on. That's making it a little bit acidic. Um, which which tells me a whole bunch of different things, but but right now that's why you also said it was hard to swallow. If you're really producing really well by about swallow three or four, you'll start to you know feel like okay now I have something to swallow. Okay, now what I want you guys to do is you're going to get some juice from the half of a fresh lemon, and we're gonna um, you're gonna combine it with a half a cup of water. Now I. We'll just do the lemon straight. But you can combine it with a half a cup of water and drink it down. Then what you want to do, let me give you this instruction real quick. After you drink it down, you're going to take a half a cup of water, swish it around in your mouth really good. So we're going to dilute that, that pH, that really acidic pH of the lemons, about a 4.0. We're going to dilute it. We're going to swallow that. And then we're going to begin watching the clock. So, um, and we're going to take it in one minute. Two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute, six minutes. Okay. Now, um, we'll talk a little bit about this while while Stephanie's waiting. But you, what you want to do is get your lemon, put it in a half a cup of water, drink it down. Then you're going to take a fourth a cup of water, swish it all around, drink it down, and then Stephanie, when you're done, I'm going to start timing. Everybody ready? Okay. Stephanie, we're ready for you to drink your lemon water. Okay. 
doing it right from the measuring cup. <laughs> I love it. Okay, now she's gonna take a quarter cup of water, we're gonna swish it around in her mouth, and then she's gonna swallow again. So a lot of times people will say, okay, and we're gonna start our minute timer. And then when I say go, Stephanie, you're gonna check your pH, okay? Okay. So a lot of people will say, okay, we're exposing a lot of acidity into the mouth, right? And so the body will start producing an alkaline response or to try to buffer that. But by swallowing the lemon water, we're already activating the hydrochloric acid in the stomach. We're activating the bile salt and the, the uh, um, uh, proteolytic enzymes by the pancreas, as well as the lecithin that our body houses in the gallbladder. Remember, lecithin emulsifies fats. Really important that that works really well. Proteolytic enzymes break down your complex carbohydrates, so they cause energy and not weight gain. Um, and we're at 42 seconds. Got about 15 seconds more. You can swallow. You don't have to hold on to saliva. And let's see what she does. Most people will go more acidic, and then they will go a little bit alkaline, and then they will stabilize. But let's see what Stephanie does. All right, Stephanie, go and take your pH. And once she's done spitting, I already go ahead and reset for another minute. Because even though she's reading it, we want to calculate the next minute. This is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and so you want to put your pH strip next to your testing guide and see what your pH says that it is at the one minute mark. And this is a great way if you're getting started on any of the programs, if you feel stuck, if you're noticing any um, particular cravings, this is a great way to see how much reserve your body has. What do we got? 6.6. 6. 6.6. 6. Okay, so she rebounded a little bit alkaline. And actually, Stephanie, get ready to take your next salivary test. Okay. Give me just a second more. And let's go ahead and take the two minute one. So with Stephanie's body, her, she started uh, a little bit on the acidic side in the beginning. So actually what we wanna do is see if we can't trigger her to produce a little more digestive enzymes efficiently. When we, I'm gonna show you, there's a seven day pH testing protocol and we're gonna have Stephanie do that too at home. When we're looking at a salivary pH that's low, we actually want to do things to stimulate alkalinity in the saliva pH. What did it already was her drinking some lemon water. So she, uh, Stephanie would be a great candidate for having lemon water in, uh, drinking lemon water between her meals. All right, 6. Stephanie, what you got? 6.7. Okay. Stephanie, I'm timing you again. You got about 30 seconds, and we're going to do one more. Fine. Let's keep this party going. <laughs> so the juice of a half a lemon has brought in Stephanie's pH, salivary pH, up to a stable level. However, I would really like her to actually buffer a little bit higher, go a little bit higher, because I don't want her to stabilize back at a 6.0. Things that we find with an acidic salivary output, right? Typically the individual, not always Stephanie, but you can let me know, will have a tendency to have carb cravings in the afternoons. They will have, <laughs> okay, Stephanie, get ready. On five, four, three, two, one. Not always, but a lot of times they don't have a very strong appetite first thing in the morning. Um, and I'm going to reset this and go again. Their, their um, hunger sensations usually don't come on until later in the afternoons. Um, we can sometimes find, and so the, remember the body buffers all of our excretions to keep our blood stable. Our blood is slightly over a seven, and if it goes off at all, we're out of here. We actually can't manipulate our blood pH like we can our saliva or our urine pH. Okay, 6.9. 6.9? 6. 
Yeah. Okay. So what we're starting to see happen with Stephanie is now her accessory organs and glands are starting to kick in. They're starting to say, okay, I'm going to create an alkaline ash, maybe some more bile salts. Stephanie might even, Stephanie, you might even be feeling a little bit nauseous sometimes when you rebound, the gallbladder will start to secrete a little bit more and that can give you a little teeny bit of a nausea feel. Um, so, so we'll give her, we're going to test it again in just a second. Ready to go again? All set. All right, it's, it's all on you. Oops. My mouth is very dry, actually. Yeah. So we want her to start hyper producing enzymes. She should feel almost like, like when kids teethe and they drool, right? One of the reasons why babies drool when they teethe is they start to hyperproduce those proteolytic enzymes to break through the gums so that the teeth can erupt, okay? So, so when she's got a dry mouth and she's still alkaline, we're saying, okay, she's not kicking those enzymes in really strong yet. It's 6.9 still. Okay, 6.9. So Stephanie, you got 30 more seconds. We're gonna do one more. How are you doing over there? Doing okay. Good. And, um, if you were right too. I do get um, after, especially after this pregnancy, uh, sugar cravings. Like after three o'clock, after two o'clock, I am really tired. I tend to, you know, if I sit down, it's like I could go to sleep. Right. And that's a lot of adrenal reserve. And so we want to look at that. Okay, Stephanie, you're up again. So when we talk about digestive reserve, this says if I push Stephanie, how quickly can she rebound, right? And I simply pushed her with the juice of a half a lemon. Imagine four babies, right? <laughs> 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 so, so what this gives us, and, and I'm, I'm making a leap here, but this gives us an indication of reserve when the body's stressed with the juice of a half a lemon, right? We do know, and that's why we do the testing before, that she's walking into this stress test a little under this at a 6.0, which, which makes it a little bit harder for her to realize the benefits of, especially the complex carbohydrates. That's why you will have a tendency to crave the sugars. So we really want to kind of, um, look at things that we can do with that. And I, I will, uh, we'll go over that when we have our five minute break. Um, let's see. Uh, 6.9. Okay. Here we go, boy. You're just, we're going to give you an A for consistency. <laughs> okay, I'm going to reset it again for another minute. This goes pretty fast, which is why I wanted to do this on the video. If you can have a friend or family member help you time. And the biggest thing is just get your pH strips out and ready. Get your timer ready. And you just want to test, 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 log, log, log. And think about the results later. Okay, I'm trying to kind of talk over it at the same time. Um, but we can kind of talk about the results here in a little bit. One more time, um, Stephanie, we're going to do one more and then we're going to set it for five minutes, chat a little bit, and then we'll, we'll play from there. So when we have a very, um, uh, acidic things that we do are anything that can help, um, deep breathing exercise, baking soda and sea salt baths, more alkaline foods. So when Stephanie does any complex carbohydrates, we want to add more alkaline foods, more vegetables with it. So for example, if she were to make a beautiful brown rice, if we could add some onions, some cilantro, some parsley, maybe even some finely grated spinach into her rice, she would help realize those complex carbohydrates more efficiently. Um, metabolism free radicals is usually a really good one when I've got people that are acidic, but I want to make sure that it's acidic also in the urine. Um, and that's, that's a great one. She would be, um, um, things like alfalfa tea is an awesome one to help those digestive enzymes. You ready, Stephanie? 6.6. 6.6? Yes. Okay. I'm going to now set it for five minutes. We're going to chat for a second and then we'll do one more. So usually I have you, once you, once you do um, out those six readings, then we go ahead and we wait five minutes. We give our body a little bit of time to recoup and we wait uh, five minutes more. For myself, when I feel like I've got my 
autoimmune, especially in my inflammatory hormones really dialed in, it usually takes me the two to three minute mark to be stable again. It's a quick test for me. You know, I can check in with myself. I can, um, you know, go run and go run my labs and things like that. But this is a quick check for me to know if I'm keeping things kind of really balanced and really regulated really well. Um, a couple things that we want to talk about, Stephanie, that do, if you don't mind, if I just ask you a couple questions. Okay. No. <laughs> um, when you do your snacks on phase two, are you adding a vegetable in with that snack or are you doing a protein only? Um, a little bit of both, I would say. Sometimes I have protein on the go because I might be on the road um, or, you know, something might be crazy at home and I do my protein and then before I realize it, it's been an hour and a half and I didn't do my vegetable. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm going to say I end up doing more my protein and less with the vegetable. So, for example, if Stephanie's pH would have been very alkaline, like a, a even even a seven two, a seven four, I would be making sure that she had protein with her complex carb for breakfast in phase one, right? But because yours is more acidic, I'm going to really want to make sure that you're adding the vegetable with your phase two protein between snacks. Okay. Also, when you do your complex carb on phase three combined with your fats. I want you to definitely add a vegetable in there. So, so the metabolism enzymes, if you if you can't get this stabilized really quickly, they they're the one thing that's not vegan in our program because they have a glandular uh, pancreatic support. The reason why we do that is because in, in clinic and in in our community, we're wanting to evoke a, a change, right? And I want you to produce your enzymes efficiently. I don't want you to be in a situation where you need to to um, have something be a crutch. I want something to nurture your own production, and it's really hard to do that with a plant based enzyme. Otherwise, otherwise, believe me, we would. Um, but um, let's we've we've got another two minutes before we check again. Um, a couple other questions that I have for you is, um, I'm just looking at your numbers here. Um, what, what kind of exercise are you doing? Uh, mostly weightlifting. Okay. So when, when we have, you'll see on the sheet that that's on your thing, you would be uh, really good for deep breathing, stretching exercises, yoga, walking outside. So when the, one of the things that happens when we um, do weightlifting, which I love, but when the saliva is a little bit uh, um, acidic and it has a hard time staying stable once we've challenged it, we like to do things that help oxygenate. So I'm a big, like especially in phase two, as heavy a weight as you can to cause those micro tears and that are a little pro-inflammatory and the body rebounds. You're having a little bit of a harder time rebounding. So I would go lower weights, higher reps in this situation. So so little tweaks like this that just, and, and then as you pH balances, as it starts to stabilize, you can maybe go back to the heavier weights again. But these are just ways to communicate with your body. Um, if this, if your digestive reserve test turns out awesome and amazing, run, run with what you're doing. If it's off, I usually say, give me seven days of doing the seven day pH testing protocol. It can give us even more um, data about how we can support your body. And, and the thing is, is that I want to make sure that we support your body so that we can kind of unlock those little snags that are maybe stagnating the metabolism. Um, really, really important. Um, Stephanie, that you do a combination of both raw and cooked foods. So I want you doing, you know, like even the warrior soup would be a really good thing for you to have around. The H burn soup would be really good for you to have around so that you have some, a lot of those cooked micronutrients because those micronutrients can help alkalinize the saliva pH. Um, and then, you know, maybe save your raw if you can for a little earlier in the morning where your adrenals aren't quite as fatigued in the afternoon. So if you're going to have a raw vegetable, like maybe some bell peppers or some cucumbers or some zucchini raw or some celery raw, let's do that before lunch or with lunch and make sure that after lunch you're doing some, like even a cup of the um, H burn soup before bed would be phenomenal for your body. Okay. Okay. Or the warrior soup. Okay. It's time to take it one more time. All right. Do, 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 do. 
do just kidding. <laughs> I'm anxious to see what it is. So I have a question during this, um, you know, your, your mouth gets a little dry. Would you want to drink water in between no. all of this? Right? No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You don't want to dilute out any of the enzymes. And, and what we want to do is get, get what you're secreting because water has its own pH itself and it's also it dilutes things. So let's say you're very acidic or very alkaline and you, let's say you're very acidic and you drink water that has a little bit of alkalinity or vice versa, you can dilute out your pH. Great question. Wow, it got darker. She's going to probably go about a 7.4 to, I, I, I see you bouncing real high in my opinion, but we'll see. I'm, I'm looking and, and honestly, seven, three, seven, four. Okay. Kind of right in between. Yep. Okay. So, so wow. let's, <laughs> that's okay. So, <laughs> so, so when a body, and let's just kind of, I, I don't want to make any ginormous leaps. Um, Stephanie, we haven't gotten a chance to kind of talk through all the different things food-wise. Uh, this is the first time we've had a chance to engage. But but I just want to tell you how fascinating this is for me about your body. And I hope you're as in awe of what your body's doing as, as I am. I just, my brain is going a million um, miles a minute thinking of all the things that we can do to kind of support the body. But let's just recap a little bit. So when Stephanie first tested her digestive reserves, we just simply had her do the act of swallowing, right? And that yielded a little bit of an acidity in the saliva pH. With acidity in the saliva pH, we see fatigue in the afternoon. We see increased cravings for sugars. Um, and, and so we want to boost that up. So really important, chewing your food, Stephanie, is important for everybody. But what we're noticing with you is that it, it takes a lot of stress, that's that length of time, to get your body to start producing those enzymes. So really being diligent, simply chewing your food. The other thing is I want to give in the afternoon, we get um, our autonomic, our nervous system. It's one of the reasons why we sleep at night, hopefully, and we wake in the morning, bright-eyed and bushy-tails. We have a rhythm, right? Uh, the raw foods are a little bit harder to break down, so I want you to do that in the earlier hours, and the cooked foods are a little bit easier. I need you to have more vegetables, but I don't want you doing a bunch of salads at night because your body's already telling me it's a little bit tired later on in the day. Once we, once we challenged her with some lemon, um, instead of going acidic, which is typically what we look for where the body says, oh my goodness, you know, I have the acid exposure, her body jumped in and tried to create um, uh, what I would consider alkaline seeing as you started at a at a 6.0. So really we need to add like if you were supposed to be a 6.8, you would be a 7.6 if you would have started out normal and you were, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like you, it's like you were here. So going here looked, looked, sorry, you were, you were here. I'm trying to do it backwards. So going here looked normal when actually it, there's that spread there. Right. And then even after, um, you know, a good, 11, you know, 12 minutes, you, you still hadn't stabilized back to a 6.0. So no matter where you start, the goal is, is that you stabilize back to where you were at within that 10 to 15 minutes, really strong and robust. We want to see it in the first three minutes. So that's what we're going to strive for. So I want you to add just a few of those things in. And, and, and I mean, my suggestion is do the seven day pH. It'll give you even more tips of what to add in. But simply if you double down on your vegetables, if you lower your weights, if you increase uh, breathing or even the alternate nostril breathing, which we're gonna teach on this next challenge, um, if you um, uh, you know do the early morning raw, later cooked, make sure that you add a vegetable with your complex carbohydrate, give it seven days, five days, do those things, you will be surprised. This will change it that fast. Your body is really um, quick to rebound when you give it the right things. Um, I'm going to, Stephanie, I'm going to just kind of do a little bit of a recap, but do you have any other questions for me right now as we start to look at this? Just so I can get the numbers clear in my head, what would like a really good test number wise look like? Okay. So, so the ideal situation is usually we start out at a 6.8. We go to maybe a 5.8. Okay. Sometimes we go to a 7 and then we stabilize 6.8, 6.8, 6.8, 6.8, 6.8. Okay. That's the ideal. Okay. That's what we're striving for. 
And what that means is the act of swallowing doesn't stress you to the point where we deplete your digestive reserves, which we did, going to a 6.0. The act of challenging you with the lemon, you say, yes, I went acidic, I'm going to go acidic, I'm going to rebound, and then I'm going to stabilize. And that's what, we're, that's what we're looking for in this. So you guys, if you're off at all, do the seven-day lemon challenge test. And really, um, it's what I, what, the reason why I like that is because it matters whether you do, when you do, when you start adding in the urine too, you'll see my notes, but it gives you ideas. If the urine's acidic and the saliva is um, alkaline, if you've got alkaline, alkaline, if you've got acid, acid, if you've got acid, alkaline. So it gives you even more. And, and the, that one's really easy because you don't need um, a lemon. You don't need to do anything. You just check your pH at the same time every morning. Uh, nothing in the mouth before a uh, second morning uh, urine void. And it's a really great one. And you get this little chart and you can test that too. And that gives you even more tips. But but really, I feel like, Stephanie, with what your body did, you know, I, I would consider, um, you know, on the FMD, looking at the Adrenal Repair uh, food, food RX guide, okay. looking at the Adrenal Repair um, um, cookbook, the free cookbook. It's You can just download that and play with some of those recipes. Um, if you, I don't know if you do metabolism energy and metabolism stress blend, but those beverages, the way we layer them morning and night is so beneficial when the body has been depleted. I just got them and I just started them oh, um, good. three days ago. Now I good. didn't do any of that today because I didn't want that to affect. So I didn't know if that would affect it. So I didn't do no my problem. energy for the stress um, today. No problem. And um, the stress, you might want to layer that in at lunch and at night, just as, just as, just be, to get that magnesium to just to nourish you, but kind of back up quickly. I, okay. I, Okay. Oh, that actually brought, I, um, I take a magnesium supplement. So if I do the stress, should I still take the supplement or will the. So we use in the, in the stress blend, there's a dye magnesium in it and a, a, a catalyst formula. So it's really effective. Usually we don't have individuals, uh, have that need. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, if you take a magnesium, like a citrate or something like that, and the stress that might cause a looser stool, but the type of magnesium we did are is uh, designed to migrate more through the blood-brain barrier and be more adrenal nurturative than a magnesium that might, um, you know, loosen the stool or something like that. Okay, that's good to know. Cool. Well, thank you for doing this with me. And what I want you guys to do is go do your digestive reserve test. I want you to post your results. Let's keep the conversation going. Um, this is a super simple way to see how much nourishing your body needs and how much nourishing your body's getting. If you ever feel frustrated with your body, if you ever feel like you're stuck, if you're ever you know, irritated at not getting enough scale or non-scale victories, look and see how much your reserve is. You know, you would never be frustrated with yourself for um, you know, being able to loan a friend $500 if you only had $5 in the bank, right? So <laughs> we want your reserves to be just um, able to handle the stress of a lemon. And if it's having a hard time handling the stress of the lemon, give yourself a little hug from me and be proud of yourself for handling the everyday stressors that we're all exposed to all day long. So, sound good? Excellent. I want baby pictures. Okay, absolutely. All right. <laughs> nice to meet you, Stephanie. You too. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. this was great. Thanks for thank you for doing this. We'll talk to you soon. Bye guys. I want to see your results.